Blade Runner 2049 is the best sequel I've seen other than Troll 2, and I'm going to look at how the film reflects on and alters established ideas from the original Blade Runner to significant effect. In the most famous scene from the original Blade Runner, Roy Batty laments that all those moments will be lost in time like tears in rain. 2049 similarly deals with the concept of memories being lost to time through the character Joy, Kay's holographic partner. When leaving the city, Joy tells Kay to delete her from the console where her memories are stored, leaving her memories on the emitter alone. In this way, she meets much the same end as Roy Batty when her emitter is destroyed. Joy even has her own rain scene in which Kay comes to realize that Joy was just doing and saying everything he wanted according to her programming, and so even Kay's memories of Joy are sullied. Yet 2049 does not just retread old ground on the topic of memories and precipitation. Sure, 2049 has its fair share of rain, but it also has a distinctly snowy ending. It causes one to question why Roy and Joy's ends are a dour, depressing, rainy tragedies, while Kay's end is hopeful, bright, and snowy. I would argue that this difference shows that even in death, Kay's memories are not lost to time like tears in rain, rather his memories are solidified as a beautiful white snow. This is reflected when the girl who shares Kay's memories basks in holographic snow, just as Kay is being covered by snow outside. Kay tells Deckard that all the best memories are hers, and gracefully accepts his death with the knowledge that his memories are not lost but live on through Deckard, who he saved, and Deckard's daughter who has the same childhood memories, and therefore we have snow, not rain, at the end of 2049. If we look at the contents of Kay's shared memories, we see further connections and differences between the two Blade Runner movies. In a controversial scene from the original Blade Runner, Deckard relives a memory of a unicorn implying that he is a replicant. 2049, in turn, takes the real-life analog to a unicorn, a horse, and places it in Kay's shared memories to imply that he is a human. Although Kay is technically a replicant, his entirely real memories generate genuine human responses. Take it from the memory maker herself who says that If you have authentic memories, you'll have real human responses. Wouldn't you agree? Alright, let's get to my favorite scene in the movie, one that demonstrates Kay's real human response as a result of his memories. Amid several lesbian statues, Kay sticks his hand in a beehive and allows bees to cover him unimpeded. This scene is clearly connected to Rachel's Voight Kampf test in the original Blade Runner, the audio of which also appears in 2049. Suddenly you realize there's a wasp crawling on your arm. I'd kill it. You're reading a magazine, you come across a full-page nude photo of a girl. Is this testing whether I'm a replicant or a lesbian, Mr. Deckard? Just answer the questions, please. In the test, Rachel not only asks if the test is to determine if she is a replicant or a lesbian, but she also answers the scenario of a wasp on her arm by saying she'd kill it. The presence of lesbians and B. Ilk in both scenes concretely connects them, and given that through answers such as deciding to kill the wasp, Rachel was found to be a replicant, I would posit that Kay not killing the bees is meant to show his genuine human response. 2049 puts forward that one of the qualities of being human is the ability to go against your natural programming. That when Kay sees the threat, namely a bee, his response is not to kill it but to accept it with an open hand. This is also reflected in the lesbian statues. Theoretically, the naturally programmed partner of a female is a male, yet in this scene we have sculptures portraying humans are going against this programming. Everything about this scene beautifully shows how Kay's authentic memories generate real human responses. The scene shares a similar quality to the unicorn scene from the original Blade Runner, but instead of implicating the character as a replicant, it shows Kay's humanity. In the spirit of the original film, 2049 is more interested in blurring the line between humans and replicants than defining it. We have replicants taking human action, 
and the question of what Deckard really is goes unanswered. Blade Runner 2049 is one of my favorite movies, and I think it is better than the original. Obviously, 2049 owes a lot of its greatness to what the original established, yet I think what it does with the pre-established world and concepts greatly outweighs that debt. By having the mystery centered on the main character, it avoids boring plotlines like when Deckard was investigating the Snake Lady in the original. Since Kay is primarily investigating himself, the process is interesting. Mystery plot points and emotional story beats line up in a satisfying way. When Kay discovers something, like the place from his memory, it is not only another piece of the mystery puzzle, it also affects Kay emotionally. In contrast, the original Blade Runner's investigation is about characters we don't really care about until the end of the film, or not at all in the case of the Snake Lady. 2049 even takes inspiration from one of the most boring scenes in the original and enhances it so it's enjoyable. Instead of Deckard repeatedly stopping and enhancing an image that the audience couldn't care less about, 2049 has Kay find a serial number on Rachel's bones and discovering a rare life form through the same type of scene. Through Blade Runner 2049, Denny Villeneuve is able to craft a piece that at once reflects on the original movie, he also strays from it in meaningful ways. I can't wait for his next film, Dune, which will save 2020.